hello everybody uh, thank you for uh, attending my first uh, session first part uh, now i'm going to talk about uh, growth chart a little bit uh, just superficial not so deep because uh, i'll be going deep diving uh, in my last session but uh, i'll be discussing about uh, you know how children grow uh, what are uh, the standard reference curve uh, you know as per who growth charts and i will also show some of the success stories that we have had you know that how just by teaching proper breastfeeding technique mothers can you know have really good milk transfer from her to the baby and children grow remarkably beautifully you know not only on weight and height also uh, i'll be also discussing about uh, some of the data which has uh, come from our projects in urban slum as well as in uh, some of the district like banaskata district you know um, sabarkata district uh, and also from our uh, you know uh, program in urban slums so um, thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoy this session so basically when you when you go to a pediatrician okay uh, and if when you bring your small children what pediatrician they do is they they basically plot children's height and weight uh, if they are small children say under two years of age they take a length for age chart and when they are uh, you know when they're older older than two years they check a uh, height for age length means they check uh, length of a child while baby is in the lying down position okay and height is when the uh, uh, you know when children are in the upright position so here what we are trying to do is uh, you know here we are taking the length of a child because child is under two years of age and we're checking the weight okay and then they use this who growth chart which i will discuss in detail in my last session uh, but just quickly showing you what kind of growth chart we have so basically this is the world health organization you can see it on the right side corner uh, so those are who growth chart and these are basically standard reference okay uh, what they have there are about five lines over here uh, you know 58th percentile 85th percentile 97th percentile and this chart is weight for age okay and it's for a girl child so that's why it's in pink in color okay on x-axis you have this uh, you know uh, basically uh, months uh, and year and on y-axis you have uh, weight in kg okay and basically your average children should be on 50th percentile okay so 50 percent of children are on this uh, percentile on green line and that's what my target is my target is to bring all these children who are undernourished or malnourished i want to bring them at least to 58 percentile to bring that's my target okay but in that target what happens is so many children they do so beautiful on mother's milk when mothers are taught proper breastfeeding technique and then once they know what food to start at six months of age these children just do amazingly well that they not only they grow in weight but they also grow in length okay uh, so this is what my whenever i say the target weight gain target weight gain i talk about uh, bringing children to 58th percentile okay and this is the weight weight of the child and this is the uh, age of the child and say what happens is suppose any child who comes to me suppose child is three months old and basically i would plot i would take three month old and then i will look at what is the weight of the child okay and then, and then i plot it okay so this is what i follow uh, and i do recommend all the pediatrician everybody including mothers families you know healthcare workers they have to start plotting this growth chart then only you'll know how children grow okay so you know that how in first three months children grow very fast okay weight wise they grow almost a kg a month you know and then they slow down okay so if you have slow growth in first three months itself right then you will have underweight remember i mentioned to you on my uh, first slide that uh, you know we have so much of underweight and uh, uh, you know wasting like uh, you know children are low on weight as per height and that's because they are not growing uh, as much as they should in first three months and that's why you're seeing so much of uh, you know underweight and so much of sam and all our uh, you know stunted children are not coming out of uh, malnutrition okay and this is the chart that i've plotted for this particular child so uh, what we are seeing over here this baby has been put in a supine position in a in a lying down position okay and we are checking the length of this child and we are also checking the uh, weight of this child 
okay and from date of birth we can find out what is the if the child has reached a target or not whether length is okay or not whether height is uh, you know whether weight is okay or not so that's what we are trying to do over here okay and there is a particular way of checking the height and length and that we will uh, I will also mention uh, how to do it uh, okay and then we basically plot this child so whenever I ask this question to any healthcare worker or even doctors that what do you think the weight what do you think the age of this child and they all by and large you know 90% of them they say oh this child looks like a one-year-old child but no this child is not one year old and look at it this child is only six months old and because mother was taught proper technique look at the weight has gone to maybe like 9.42 kg okay and then as the child is growing beautifully on mother's milk and this is 97 percentile what does it mean it means that baby is growing very beautifully okay and has become big and has gone about 97 percentile okay which is absolutely fine for me because this is breastfed baby now if this baby was on formula feed or on cow's milk then i would have been worried because uh, formula milk and cow milk will cause a lot more uh, obesity you know and yeah it will cause undernutrition also but you know uh, if suppose there is no diarrhea or pneumonia uh, you know then ch the children will become obese and uh, you know will have issue with uh, pre-diabetes and diabetes later on okay so if babies on uh, breast milk then these children are protected from uh, all kind of diseases okay including infections including uh, uh, NCDs non-communicable diseases so I'm not at all worried if child is beautifully breastfeeding and growing well okay now as baby is growing fast okay look at the length look at this only three percent of children are of her or for her length okay now in India as I mentioned to you in India what is the issue we have almost 36 percent children who are below third percentile okay below third percentile means only three percent children should be below third percentile but in India we have almost 36 percent children who are below third percentile so this is what we need to change we need to change this uh, you know uh, uh, this narrative uh, that you know uh, Indian children are small and they'll be they are short and you know they are not short they are short because we are not doing the uh, right thing for them okay so look at this child length is 97 percentile and if she continues to get and this is a girl child if she continues to get good nutrition in first six months and of course after that also and if she doesn't get any uh, you know uh, childhood illnesses like diarrhea pneumonia then this child will do very well I mean she will be extremely tall for her uh, for her age and this is what we want because as per latest uh, Lancet uh, article which had come out uh, you know a couple of months or a few months ago I would say uh, and that article said that average height of a girl okay 19 year old woman is only 5 feet in India and the average uh, height of a man is only 5 4 can you uh, I mean this is what I want you guys to understand that why do we have such short people in our country because they are not taken care of in first six months 12 months of age I would say 12 months because uh, you know even if this child suppose if this child uh, same child uh, you know this is a weight and if this child does not get proper nutrition after six months of age say she gets only watery dal and watery uh, rice and you know uh, hardly anything no protein you know no eggs or no uh, proper thick uh, you know dal then they will not grow they will basically continue on the same weight and eventually they'll come down okay but length takes time uh, so child may become stunted a little bit uh, you know kind of they fall on the growth if they don't get enough food okay but as I mentioned that if you can really work hard on mother's breast milk techniques then they children they do pretty well because even after six months of age they continue to get a lot of milk uh, but uh, it's very detrimental to start proper food after six months of age okay so I'm going to show another case study this is a boy child okay uh, look at her eyes you can see her see his eyes mother is looking so happy uh, you know child is look looks pretty tall looks pretty healthy right and if you look at uh, this child um, eyes are looking so sharp looking directly into the camera uh, this is the beauty of well-grown children okay because 
because the breastfeeding has gone so right and breast milk has so many ingredients which are so important for IQ development, for develop, you know, just a physical growth, for brain development, for everything, right? And you can just make out just looking at their eyes, they just look uh, so sharp and very, very uh, attentive, right? Uh, this is again the six months old baby child, baby boy, okay? Uh, look at the weight, 10 kg weight. Okay, now uh, in my WHO growth chart uh, session, I will be discussing about the target weight gain. Okay, but if I basically plop this 10 kg for six months old boy child, so let's see, this is the WHO growth chart. Okay, this is the weight for age chart for boys. Okay, it's a percentile chart, means basically it uh, tells us the percentile uh, of each child, and then basically that where he falls, and then basically, uh, you know, your age and your weight. So I plotted the six months old child with 10 kg weight, okay? And look where, look where he is. He's above 50, 97 percentile, which means only 3% children come over here in this area. And uh, normally only 3% children should come below. But as I mentioned, in India, we have 36, almost 30, um, probably with the latest uh, data, I would say about 32% children, one third children are below this uh, third percentile, okay? So this is important. And same child, if I plot his length, look at the same child. As the child has grown beautifully on mother's milk, uh, I'm talking about the weight. Now look at the length. Look at this child is tall. Now he's going to be tall. There is no doubt about it. Because whatever length that you have gained, you know, if you continue to give good nutrition, this child is going to keep growing tall and tall. You know, and if, if, if you know, uh, if there are no other medical issues, if there are, you know, if she does, if he doesn't get severely sick with diseases, you know, then he will become tall. Okay. So this is what I wanted to explain. Uh, what, uh, what needs to be done in India is basically you saw that focus on your, no, not at only just maternal nutrition, but uh, breastfeeding skills and complementary feeding. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, one more thing I wanted to mention over here. Now, again, if this child is not, suppose, not uh, given proper food after six months of age, complementary foods, then they will not gain weight. Their muscle will start uh, melting. Okay. And that I will explain in my second session that how this muscle start uh, starts melting. Okay. And uh, once their muscles start waiting, they start becoming leaner and leaner and leaner. And then at the stage comes where they become underweight moderately underweight or severe underweight or you know as per the age so again it's very very important that after you start uh, proper breastfeeding that six months mother needs to know what food to start specifically i focus on protein rich diet okay here so this is the target weight of a, uh, basically these are who tables that is given on their uh, website who website and we have picked up uh, you know uh, who table for a male child okay because i i personally believe that uh, girls can grow as big as male children okay uh, so if if mothers know how to breastfeed that baby at least in first six months i've noticed that they grow as beautifully as boys you know so generally i always talk about the uh, target weight gain for male child and, and i do kind of uh, expect uh, because i've seen those results in my in my projects that uh, this children even girl children should gain that much weight okay so here is the basically age in weeks uh, so these are basically first week second week third week fourth week you know and here you see uh, the average weight gain per week okay as per WHO growth chart so here you know you can see that the average weight gain in first week is 200 grams now what we are taught in pediatrics that you know first two weeks you know babies don't gain weight and first week uh, by seven days they they come back to birth weight and all that but the thing is if you look at WHO growth chart that's not what it suggests what WHO is suggesting is basically baby gain 200 gram in first week Okay, and in just two weeks, babies are gaining 500 gram already in, by second week of age. So, and this is when does this happen? When mothers are taught proper breastfeeding technique. So, I really insist that mothers should be taught breastfeeding technique uh, before pregnancy, I mean, or before delivery, so that she understand how to do it. And during uh, during delivery time, or maybe just immediately after delivery, you know, that baby needs to come on mother's breast so that uh, they can learn how to latch. And then for two days while mother is in the hospital, you know, you need proper guidance to teach her uh, how to breastfeed. Okay. And then you can see like literally by four weeks, 
child has already gained 1100 grams do you see over here so by four weeks not even one month complete uh, so this is what my target weight gain is okay and if you're doing really well you will see that uh, this uh, children grow not just 1.1 1 .1 kg uh, uh, you know in first month but sometimes they grow 1.5 kg and I've seen that in my low birth with babies also okay and if you look at the weight gain per day see look at the weight gain you know when i talk to again all the healthcare workers their weight gain uh, target is just 15 to 20 grams okay 15 to 20 grams that's it their weight gain target per day and look at the weight gain target which is recommended by who look at this okay you cannot have uh, just if if your baby needs to be gaining 42.8 grams per day then if you expect only 20 gram weight gain then right then three months your baby will become malnourished okay so please understand that the this is a weight gain per day this one is weight gain per week and this is your weight uh, kg uh, you know what what would be the expected weight you know at first week second week and this is in uh, babies who are born 3.3 so babies who are not born 3.3 kg because that's the average birth weight of a boy child okay so if that is not happening then you what you will see is that then those babies need to catch up very fast and what I have again experienced in my uh, uh, projects that if it's low birth weight babies if they are again taught proper techniques they are gaining much higher weight than even average babies normal babies okay so please focus on the technique of breastfeeding okay so these are some of the growth charts uh, you know uh, which we have tracked uh, on child growth tracker it's an app which i will discuss uh, in my last session okay and here uh, this are uh, basically z score chart again that i'll discuss in our uh, presentation in last session so here what has happened that this baby is uh, has come just 1.8 kg at birth and then for first two and a half months mother's mother didn't know uh, how to breastfeed so you can see there's hardly any weight gain do you see there is no catch up at all whatsoever now i would have expected a lot of catch up growth in first one month two months right but here because mothers didn't know proper technique you know uh, that growth uh, growth is not uh, there but as soon as at two and a half months one of our student helped mother you know uh, uh, how to breastfeed this was a male student actually in fact uh, you know and he taught this mother using the uh, using our health spoken tutorial and look at the weight catch up Right, and this is the mother from slums of Bhuneshwar, uh, Odisha, and uh, so this is this is our result. Okay, and same thing, it's a similar uh, kind of uh, baby, born small, you know, uh, less than 2.5 kg, uh, but basically this mother was taught uh, breastfeeding technique uh, right at birth. Okay, so when when she knew that technique at birth, look at the catch up growth right from uh, from uh, minus 2.5 minus 2.5 standard deviation has jumped to mean okay mean mean is where the 50th percentile is okay so that's our goal so within two and a half months this baby reached the 50th percentile and look at this child struggling to get into uh, you know 50th mean or even the last line just because child mother was taught much later okay so we don't want this because this is what happens in all most of our children if they are not supported mothers are not supported uh, there is tremendous amount of growth failure you know and then there is no growth catch up and this children then they suffer because you know uh, that weight gain in first three four months are very important because that will improve their iq level later on and these children, they don't do, uh, you know, if they don't reach their mean, they don't do well uh, physical growth also. So they are small and these children have high risk of developing metabolic diseases later on. Okay. So here it's the same child that I explained earlier. Now, eventually, you know, you can see the child has, uh, is reaching the, uh, you know, minus 2.5 deviation, uh, deviation, standard deviation. And then, uh, you know, uh, eventually this child will come uh, slowly and steadily because of course it's it's chronic malnutrition for almost two and a half months. So this child uh, will reach, uh, you know, at least uh, 10th percentile uh, in next probably two or three months or so. So this is what, uh, this is our case study. Okay, coming from uh, slums of uh, uh, Orissa. Okay, now this is another case study where you can see that uh, this is, uh, in fact, uh, my case study in urban slums of Mumbai, where, you know, this uh, this is uh, weight for age, okay, and this is weight for length chart, okay. So here, age, uh, I saw this baby at one month of age, 
and baby's weight was 3 kg so was born pretty good size okay uh, in slums uh, but because there was no support look at how that weight went down so at one month this baby fell uh, to almost 2.5 kg so lost about 500 grams in first one month can you imagine now if we had not seen this baby would this baby would have uh, died of diarrhea or pneumonia or any of this because how long can baby survive without proper uh, latching right proper milk transfer so fortunately we we saw this baby as soon as we saw we taught mother's proper breastfeeding technique and then see babies going up you can see you know and our goal is to bring this baby to uh, you know to uh, 50th percentile which is your you know average okay now if you look at the weight for length child in this child okay so we also check the length and we wanted to see where was that baby's weight as per length okay and because it was early on you know length was still okay but look at this uh, weight so basically baby was sam severe cut malnutrition which i will discuss in uh, other uh, sessions what is sam what is ma'am and then you know just in the matter of uh, two weeks the child came from uh, sam to average just in a matter of two weeks this is what i mean is uh, you know the uh, conversion of sam to normal is so fast in babies when they come early in your in your uh, intervention okay more you wait harder it becomes for baby to come out of acute malnutrition okay so this is this is the present this is a slide on that okay now this are some of the other uh, growth charts that i wanted to show because it's all uh, longitudinal growth chart uh, when i was working in urban slums of mumbai okay so this are again percentile growth chart you can see five lines over there you know uh, 97 percentile 85 percentile 58 15 third okay so this child uh, basically this is weight for age chart and this is length for age chart for the same child okay so this child was basically born not so bad urban slum so was born at around 80 15 percentile okay and then uh, length was basically average so about 58 percentile okay so as baby was growing in uh, weight you can see how fast baby is growing this is all only on mother's milk okay see how how catching up is occurring even if baby is born you know not so bad okay 15 percentile but look at the weight going up right and as the weight is going up you can see the uh, length picking up okay so length picked up at almost seven months baby became almost 97 percentile okay and then um, then as baby was on the uh, after seven months probably mother started uh, complementary food as per our advice you know so weight continued to stay on for 85th percentile and the length basically is also on 85th percentile so if you now plot this child's graph for length for weight this child will have perfect bmi because the child is tall so tall children will be bigger Okay, remember, I don't want a short child to be bigger. Short child, if they are bigger or they are heavier, those children have a high risk of metabolic diseases. Here we are talking about BMI. Okay, so in this child, although he's heavy, but he's tall. So, uh, so this child, imagine coming from urban slum, you know, uh, like I would say the poorest quintile as far as, far as wealth goes. And, uh, you know, this, this child is doing amazingly well. And he will definitely do well in school also because look at the weight, uh, you know, uh, length and weight increment or catch up growth, you know. Okay. Now, this was about just different uh, growth charts. Uh, individual child okay now i want to discuss some of the data fr uh, from uh, one of the ngo that uh, you know we were working in uh, basically i was a founding medical director of this ngo foundation for mother and child health and uh, we had started this ngo in 2007 okay and uh, in that ngo i stayed for almost uh, till 2017 and over a period of time we saw thousands of children you know and uh, we learned a lot from the children how they grew what was working what was not working you know uh, because we had very sophisticated software program to monitor the children uh, coming from us for that it was very very important for me to to uh, plot all these children uh, you know uh, on digital graphs uh, all the digital data because you know uh, i was not used to writing anything on the paper 
whatever in us we did we did everything on the laptop or on the computer or on the phone uh, especially we had computer in each and every room uh, where we would see uh, you know all these children okay so we did similar kind of uh, data collection in a software which was customized for this for this program so uh, what happened in this first 6 7 years uh, we were not seeing results okay so we were not seeing results in a sense should babies were not gaining good amount of weight babies were not uh, developmentally doing too well you know uh, even after six months in spite of telling them ye khana do wo khana do they were not gaining length also you know and weight also so those seven eight years was learning period for us okay once we figure out where the problems were we we, we tried to get the solution okay so there was a lot of solutions that we worked on and this all kind of hands on solution which came from learning from the field okay we did not want to start formula we did not want to start cow's milk you know even if babies didn't gain weight initially what we were doing we were kind of telling we felt that mothers are not listening so we kind of kept blaming mothers but that was not the case and then we started reflecting that whatever we are saying to mothers whether that is effective or not and we realized it was not you know so once we fixed those loopholes once we fixed those issues then we were just started seeing amazing results and this is so then after 7 8 years we said we need to now uh, document all this children's data uh, perfectly and we should basically see how the children do after one year of intervention after two years of intervention the reason we did one year of intervention because many of the children uh, we worked in dhobi ghat area and in many of the many of the children were basically um, migrated uh, from uh, up and bihar for just um, for say maybe six months one year because you know their fathers came uh, as dhobis in this area and they would go back again in a year time you know so uh, we took about 286 children uh, and we took only those children who came to us under two, two months of age because we wanted to see that how did the children do when they came very early on remember i told you that we will be able to you know uh, give very good results if they came early on okay so we took only those 286 we took all the children who were under two months of age okay we did not leave any child uh, of course we had many many children who came about two months of age also but again you know we just wanted to see the effect uh, when they came early on so here this was the effect we had basically a 286 children who came between 2013 to 2016 okay uh, and this was the data that we present in a world breastfeeding conference and here what we are seeing is the children who were uh, severely wasted at the time of admission we could decrease this uh, the severe wasting or se uh, we call it sam severe good malnutrition by 66.7 percent okay and uh, uh, overall wasting overall malnutrition we decreased by 16.7 okay uh, severe underweight decreased by 67 percent which is remarkable okay and underweight decreased by almost 50 percent okay but most remarkable thing was about stunting so you know um, now, right now government has this uh, mission to decrease stunting by two percent every year okay but look at the stunting we reduced in just one year 18 percent so imagine if we have this kind of uh, protocol or framework that we use in a program imagine what uh, result it would bring uh, in india you know uh, and this is in one year of age uh, and i wanted to i mean many children moved back to uh, up bihar because most of them had come from that area but uh, some of the children continued coming till two years of age so i wanted to see what happened if the children continue to come till two years of age okay so uh, there was a significant reduction of malnutrition at the end of two years okay so the severe wasting reduced by 40 percent okay uh, wasting basically wasting increase and i'll tell you why wasting increase i'll come back to that uh, severe underweight decreased uh, in this 80 children who came up to two years of age by almost 50 percent underweight decreased by 33 percent and severe stunting decreased by 50 percent look at the severe stunting reversal 50 percent that's remarkable okay and uh, your uh, even just a regular stunting decreased by 28 percent okay uh, now again so two years 
so government plan is to decrease uh, stunting by like by four points like four percent right but uh, like you know uh, say uh, like four points yeah but here we could decrease uh, in two years we could decrease uh, from 40 to 28 that's almost 12 points okay that's reduction of 28 percent uh, uh, stunting uh, the reason we had increase in wasting and this is kind of shown in many other studies that when children grow tall okay when they start growing tall a lot of time what happens uh, that whatever nutrients they are eating they are going into their height development in the growth development you know and they then the height grows much faster than the weight okay uh, and that's why a lot of children they kind of stayed underweight you know not necessarily sam because sam children came out of many children came out of sam but some of the children they kind of they were lean and tall you know but this children i was not worried at all because you know they were growing tall they had no infection they were doing well uh, you know developmentally they were doing well so this is what i want to explain that you know uh, it's important that uh, you know we look at wasting more in a holistic way not just a uh, point blank that oh my god wasting increased okay wasting increased because children were getting taller uh, now this is another learning for us uh, you know what i would recommend is that when children are gaining fast when they're gaining height fast i would like to give them a lot more uh, energy but not in the form of carbohydrate okay because when you give too much of carbohydrate in these children uh, we have a risk of metabolic diseases in these children and uh, nfhs 6 data nfhs 5 data shows that that uh, you know uh, these children are becoming much bigger uh, and there is a risk of metabolic diseases okay so i would give them a lot more fat uh, which are good fat which will give them energy and that that protein will be used for uh, you know other functions Okay, so this was our data from one of the uh, project in urban slum. Now that was uh, data from urban slum. I also want to discuss, we did one case control study in Banaskata district because it's one point, one thing that you know, you show results in one small slum community okay where you have a doctor you have a nurse when you have nutritionist you have a uh, field worker social worker so there's it's like a lot of resources are required to take care of that child right but we wanted to see that if we strengthen government infrastructure okay then what would happen what would happen if you have amazing uh, uh, strengthening of government infrastructure how would that uh, translate to so Banaskata district this was the data uh, initial data of, uh, comparing NFHS 4 versus NFHS 5 data okay here what we are showing is that uh, there was a reduction in uh, uh, you know first hour breastfeeding from 49.6 to 47.9 exclusive breastfeeding rate went up from 47 to 57.5 percent okay uh, uh, basically uh, you know frequency of breast uh, fed child uh, was basically uh, i would say that this is adequacy of breastfed child uh, went, went down from 7.7 .7 to 4.5 percent and adequacy in all children including breastfed and non-breastfed i'm talking about the uh, complementary feeding it went down from 7.6 percent to 3.8 percent so obviously the complementary feeding uh, uh, you know uh, was not they were not doing well in terms of complementary feeding okay and here this is the data from different uh, uh, you know p uh, areas okay so i would say talukas so amirgar data these are, these are the different talukas of uh, uh, you know your uh, Banaskata. And this was again NFHS 4 and NFHS 5 data of nutrition indicators. Okay. So you can see stunting went down just a little bit, not too much. Your, uh, you know, your wasting, uh, wasted children, like severely malnourished children, went same. There is no change in it. Okay. This is your probably under, uh, wasting data, uh, not severely wasted, but just regularly wasted children. Uh, so it includes both moderate and severe. Okay. And here you can see basically wasting went up but look at the underweight okay underweight went up too okay so this is the issue so we had started the study in uh, 2020 uh, uh, around november time and uh, this was the data which had uh, which was collected uh, for nfhs 5 during november 2019 so we started the study with this kind of background 
okay uh, it was a you know basically quantitative analysis it was experimental initially we had started as a randomized control trial but we had to switch to case control for some administration administration issue okay and then basically we did a randomized uh, trial of intervention and non-intervention group and we took about 20 phc uh, and each phc had about 16 mothers you know uh, 15 to 16 mothers and uh, basically we had 280 mothers uh, from uh, actually it was yeah so 218 mothers from each PSCs uh, so what we did basically I'll tell you about the intervention non-intervention group so in an intervention group what we did we asked mothers to come during uh, you know during pregnancy now during pregnancy we taught this mother's proper breastfeeding technique so we showed them four tutorials okay what are those four tutorials during that time we had cross cradle hold we had latching we had sideline hold and we had a laid back hold um, actually in, in banas kata we had uh, physical methods to increase breast milk supply so these are some of the tutorials that we showed you know uh, in uh, ANC time and then during PNC time when mother delivered we immediately did uh, one hour breastfeeding and we also did uh, you know uh, uh, kind of live demonstration of how to breastfeed the baby okay so they were taught 45 points of counseling okay and then uh, this was the number of boys and girls so 273 children in boys and 259 uh, uh, girls okay so total of 532 now this was the data here this is what I want to show you so basically the you can see here this is a boys and girls combined here only boys so this is your uh, intervention I mean at birth and this is at closing visit at six months okay so this is uh, intervention this is non-intervention this is intervention non-intervention this is intervention non-intervention okay so this is what uh, we can see that uh, you know babies who are in non-intervention area okay they had a lot more growth faltering so you can see the underweight went up to from 10.4 to almost 18.10 so almost basically you know it was kind of 1.78 time increase in uh, growth faltering okay they become underweight in non intervention group here in boys you know we could decrease uh, some amount of malnutrition uh, in intervention group but look at this non intervention group you know uh, it got worse okay similarly in girls unfortunately in girls uh, you know we still have this issue of girl child you know not been taken care of in Gujarat so you can see that girl children in intervention group did not do well you know they had some amount of growth faltering but look at the growth faltering occurring in uh, non-intervention group almost 2.3 time increase in faltering in those girls okay uh, we also need to see prevalence of moderate underweight so that was uh, basically your underweight now we want to see uh, moderate underweight muw okay where, where they you know the weight falls between minus two minus three standard deviation so everywhere you can see uh, you know uh, there is a growth faltering occurring uh, much more in um, non-intervention non group uh, same thing for girl children in intervention there was some amount of faltering in uh, girl, girls uh, cohort okay uh, this is for SCW severe underweight uh, you know look at the difference now as babies are uh, growing small or babies are born small you know uh, and if those babies are not taught proper latching now look at the growth faltering occurring tremendous amount of growth faltering occurring you know uh, when boys as well as girls okay and this is what we need to stop uh, this is the prevalence of wasting okay wasting means I told you too thin too thin for height or length okay so again this is all six with uh, six weeks visit so at uh, six months I would say uh, like a closing visit so in uh, six months this are boys and girls you can see uh, you know the at the end of the study in intervention group there was 14.6 percent uh, wasting and in non-intervention group there was 25 percent wasting so similarly in all age group you know uh, in, in not all age group but in all different uh, kind of boys and girls there was a tremendous faltering uh, of uh, when it comes to wasting okay so children were becoming more wasted in uh, uh, non-intervention group so non-intervention group what we did basically we just continued what what it is done at a government level at government level mothers are not brought during uh, pregnancy time to teach them on I mean on uh, 
cross cradle hold or any of those breastfeeding skills uh, they are not being supported as much which they should be uh, healthcare workers have no clue how to uh, latch the baby so in those all those uh, we can like we just continued same what it was what the standard of care uh, but our uh, you know in, in our intervention group we did everything whatever that help needed to the mother just to learn the proper technique okay and then we follow up this babies on a weekly basis till 6 months of age okay so this was another result from talasari palghar okay and then there were 500 healthcare workers were trained from 2016 to 2019 and you can see this is talasari we did the training and you can see much better results than other uh, you know um, um, other blocks uh, that children are, were doing, you know, ch children who are breastfed at birth, children uh, exclusively breastfed, you can see all green. Uh, yes, they still need some amount of uh, training, more training on dietary diversity, uh, but otherwise children did pretty well uh, when it came to, you know, IYCF. Okay, and this was done uh, almost four, four or five years ago, and they, we continued kind of training them on a regular basis. Um, Another thing is we also had done much uh, Sabarkata uh, district training and we had implemented this uh, latching project uh, in all the PHCs of Sabarkata. Sabarkata is another district in Gujarat. Okay, it's the second biggest district uh, after Banaskata. Banaskata is the biggest district. And uh, what we saw, the result of that actually, there was no other program going on, you know. We did not even focus on complementary feeding. Latching was the first project actually. So just by focusing on latching, latching means the proper breastfeeding technique, uh, how baby latches on to mother's areola, uh, we could see the reduction of stunting by 13.6% in NFHS5 data. Okay, so uh, NFHS5 data which came out for Sabarkata, uh, we saw tremendous reduction of stunting. Okay, and that's all because and initially the Sabarkata district had 51% uh, stunting rate as per NFHS4. So, uh, you know, DHO confirmed that this was the only program which was going on. Uh, so, if you look at the NFHS5 data for Sabarkata, NFHS4, uh, 5 actually, the minimum adequate diet is only 3%. Okay. So, we did not focus on those diet at all. So, if we had focused on complementary feeding, if we had focused on mother's uh, nutrition, this, this reduction would have been remarkable. It would have gone up to 25 to 30%. Reduction in just maybe one year. Okay, because we continued this project uh, basically from 2018-19. Okay, and uh, and uh, there was a IYC, I mean uh, NFHS five uh, you know survey was done in November 2019, November December. Okay, so it was just basically result of one year of intense latching uh, project you know in that, in that district. So I think we can do much better in India. Okay, so I'm going to end my presentation over here. Uh, thank you for watching this uh, past part two of so my first session and uh, I'm sure you kind of understood how children grow, uh, you know, how they do and uh, I'm sure it must be uh, really heartening to see those, uh, you know, healthy babies, chubby babies, tall babies, you know, and looking so beautiful and bright. Um, you also must have seen our data, you know, coming from uh, urban slum to like a small community versus, you know, different blocks and district level. And hopefully now we will see data uh, in NFHS 6 for Gujarat because, you know, we have already started uh, working on this uh, different uh, breastfeeding techniques and complementary foods and maternal nutrition. So I'm looking forward to that uh, uh, data uh, coming in NFHS 6 for, uh, you know, for uh, Gujarat. Um, now, third session, I'll be discussing about the framework. Okay, so what worked uh, in a program? So I'll see you then. Thank you.